Greetings and salutations. Thank you for clicking on this video. We talked about Snap Packages recently, which is a new technology from Canonical that will allow folks to install applications that are made for Linux, regardless of what distribution they're on. It's a universal package manager and distribution system. In that video, I mentioned that Snap Packages were not the only game in town, and the uh, fella here, Montana Monsta said, please, can you do a video about app image? I find it very useful. So I went off to find out more about app image, which is another universal package installer for Linux. And I checked out their webpage here, which is appimage.org. You can do that yourself and you can find out more about how it works and uh, it's kind of interesting one of the people that endorses app image is Linus Torvalds who's the fellow who created the Linux kernel as a matter of fact they have here as an example that you can download subsurface which is an application that was written by Linus Torvalds because one of his favorite things to do is go diving so this is an application that helps divers and keeps track of how much air you got going and all that stuff. So it's pretty cool. So you can download that and check it out. You can also go to uh, this link right here, which we'll look at in just a couple of moments, and that will take you to a list of app images you can download. So as you scroll down the page here, there is a video that is posted uh, by the fellow who created this and it is actually quite interesting to look at if you know anything about how software is developed for Linux and how it is packaged it's actually quite interesting and the system that he's come up with is really very very simple you download a file you change the permissions of that file and you make it executable you click on it it runs on your system and it is designed to run on just about every Linux distribution on the planet. And the way it does it, um, I watched the video, I will give you a brief overview. The way it does it is the application is stored in an ISO file with a little bit of executable code on top of it so that when you click on the application, it actually runs from that read-only ISO file it does not mount itself uh, like dev loop mounts like snap packages did we looked at before where it creates another mount there on udev that's not how this works it actually mounts it in your binary directory it creates a, a virtual directory in binary so the system always knows it's there and when it launches the app it will uh, just operate in this virtual uh, mount point which really isn't there so the application itself is always read only and um, that's the way I'm given to understand how it works so I was poking around on this page and checking it out and going well this is mighty cool so then I came over here and I followed this link right here which brings us to this page and this lists a bunch of programs that are available in app images and there's quite a few out there right now and one of the interesting things about this system is that you can set it up to automatically create an app image and all the developer has to do is submit the code to github that's it if he puts it up on github then it automatically detects that it's there there's a build service out there that takes their code, builds it, takes all the dependencies, everything you need, throws it into an app image, and here you go. So I went down through this list, and there's quite a few pieces of software here, and I chose a couple of pieces of software to test out. So I am going to show you how that worked out right now, and all I got to do is switch desktops. All right, so I have a couple of app image files here. One you may already recognize, this is Simple Screen Recorder, and this is the one that I was using as an example yesterday. This is a wonderful little application that's not available for every Linux distribution. So I downloaded it, I changed the file to be executable, and now all I have to do is click on it, 
and it will launch Simple Screen Recorder. It will ask you if you want to create an icon for the menu here. If you do, then it will place that icon in the menu. So I'm going to tell it no because I already have Simple Screen Recorder running. And now here is another instance of Simple Screen Recorder running on my computer. And I can prove that it's doing something uh, just by clicking ahead here. Well, I'm not going to do that, actually. It's, it's working. I, I've tried this before, and uh, it works just fine. I'm afraid that it might get rid of my uh, video that I'm recording right now. Well, maybe if I don't record anything. Let's go ahead and continue. Say yes. If it trashes it, we'll come back and do it again. Okay. So I can show you the preview. Yes, it is working. It is recording. It is working. So I'm going to go ahead and close Simple Screen Recorder. And I see my light is still blinking on my microphone, so that means that I'm still recording, which is good. So you see how that works. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to actually use one of these applications. I downloaded LibreOffice. This is the app image for LibreOffice, and this is one of those uh, third-party builds. Not a third-party, but this is one of those automatic builds that is set up. So anytime that the LibreOffice Foundation, uh, the Document Foundation, puts up some code, uh, on GitHub, this will automatically build the package. This is a very, I'm going to look at properties here real quick. Uh, this is a very large package. It is 260 megabytes. And that is because everything that LibreOffice needs is contained in that ISO container uh, that's part of this package. It's not using anything on the system, it's using its own stuff. So if I go to permissions here, I should be able to set this as executable. And now I will execute the program. This is all it takes to actually run the program. So here we go. Now I purposefully chose applications that I already have on the system. And the reason why I did that was because uh, I didn't want to try out an application and have it leave a bunch of configuration files that I would have to go and get rid of because even though it's running from an app image it's still going to create configuration files just as the application would if uh, it wasn't uh, you know uh, installed from an app image but actually installed from the repositories hope that makes sense so there you go uh, there's LibreOffice running and it even sees the last document that I did and uh, the LibreOffice icon will show up when I log in and log out. Right now, it doesn't really know uh, that it's an application, but that's what happened here. So this will turn into an icon, and so therefore, I can just leave it on the desktop and run it from here. Now, if you choose to create a menu shortcut to open up your application, and then you move that file, the menu is not going to be able to find it. That's something to keep in mind. But you can move these applications around. So if you want to get it off your desktop and you want to create a folder in your home folder just to throw app images in, you can have them there. You can open it. You can create a shortcut that will show up in the menu and then it'll run. It's really quite that simple. And I guess the only downside that I see to this is that if I have... Uh, five users on the computer it would seem to me that I would have to copy this to all five accounts maybe I'm wrong I don't know so that's how that works now let's really put this thing to the test because it's nice this works on Linux Mint these packages are available to Linux Mint that's great how about Linux Mint Debian this is Linux Mint's Debian edition and it uses uh, Debian as a base this is an operating system that you can't get simple screen recorder on yesterday when I did my video about snap packages I talked about that fact I was like yeah you can't get it on Debian you have to compile it so this is a real-world example will simple screen recorder run from an app image on Debian so let me open this up go to properties and now I'm gonna to go to permissions it's already set to be executable, so all I have to do is click this and Simple Screen Recorder will run. And uh, since this is a virtual machine, yes, you can create that. We can demonstrate that. Simple Screen Recorder running on 
Linux Mint Debian Edition, which is based on Jesse. So there you go, gang. <laughs> that to me is very awesome. Now, would I use this for every application? No, of course not. A lot of people thought when I was showing Snaps off yesterday that it was going to be like, well, you'd install everything. No, this is for stuff that you need that you want a daily build of, you want the latest version, or it's something that's just not native to your particular distribution. This simple screen recorder will work on Fedora. This simple screen recorder will work on, according to the, the fellow who, App Image, uh, Simon Peter, he said, the guy who's uh, running the project, he said that uh, it'll work on Red Hat 6. Okay? So <laughs> you could make it work on CentOS 6, and you could use simple screen recorder, and that's pretty cool. So that's how that works. And let's see, let's go along here. We're not going to have any audio, of course, and I'll just use the default settings. I need to, uh, well, just, I don't know, what, what should we call the file? Let's just call it test.mkv. Not really going to make a file here, but I just want to see if it works. So continue. Put this on ultra fast, gang, if you actually use this software. Okay, so all we have to do is, well, it's not recording and I know why this is because this is running in a virtual machine you see we only see the uh, mouse pointer there I completely expected that that is just because it's running in a virtual machine if it was running on if this was Debian installed on hardware it probably would work just fine because I'll show you how I know that the the what the deal is with that right there um, let's go ahead and close simple screen recorder because people will ask about this if I don't stop and show you this gang Okay, so let's go here, and I'm going to go to screenshot, and I'm going to attempt to take a screenshot of the desktop. So take the screenshot. See, I got a blank screen. That has something to do with the, I think this is on the 316 kernel, and it's, a, it's kind of a weird bug in the system. Let me see what uh, Linux Mint Debian is on. Yeah, it's on 3.16. That's why we're getting that. Absolutely. Uh, but on real hardware, you'd never run into that. That's just happening in a virtual machine. Just to prove that point, because somebody will say somewhere, Hey, man, Simple Screen Recorder works fine in my virtual machine. Yeah, I know. This is just something weird with that kernel. Okay. Uh, I didn't even install this system, by the way. <laughs> which is really awesome. I mean, you can see here, we've got install Debian right here. This is actually my Ubuntu virtual machine, and uh, I was able to download this and make it run. There it is. I can also launch it from the menu. So let's find simple screen. There it is. It's launching from the menu now. So it's integrated with the system, but it has all the dependencies it needs. It changes nothing about the host system at all. It does not need a terminal to be installed, which I think is a plus, because right now Snap packages are only being installed from a terminal. I mean, I'm sure they will have a front end to that. It'll be part of software, the software program that's in Ubuntu. I'm sure that they'll integrate that. But this is just download, mark executable, run it, done, and it works. So I, I'm kind of jazzed about app images. I'm going to keep looking at it, and I am definitely going to hang on to the app image of Simple Screen Recorder uh, because if I can get uh, uh, the applications I need, then I can uh, maybe start using Linux Mint Debian instead of the Ubuntu version, which is something that I would actually like to do. I'd like to be on Linux Mint Debian. So there you go. Thank you for watching the video. I sure do appreciate it. Oh, I do want to do one thing first. Let's go ahead and here on the virtual machine. Let's just log in and log back out. Because I want to make sure, I want to show you that that icon does show up. Uh, 
Okay, we want to log in as Mint. Well, Mint's going to log in automatically here in a couple of seconds. Oh, I think the password is Mint. Nope. And I reset it. That's all right. Watch this. I'll just pause the video. <laughs> when it logs back in, we'll come back. Yeah, I had to sit and wait that timer out for it to log back in. If I actually restarted it, then everything that I just showed you would go away because this is not an this is a live image. So anyway, gang, you get the point. That is what app image is all about. Thank you for watching the video. It's very cool. I'm going to keep an eye on this project because I cannot tell you how many times that I have been looking for something that wasn't there and um, you know you have a plan B distro it's like uh, right now I'm using Linux Mint and I'm using Ubuntu Mate and they're working out fine but if I get tired of being part of the Ubuntu ecosystem what other distro would I go to? Well, I, I don't have very good luck with Manjaro, which is one that I like. I just wish it worked better for me. And I don't really like anything else out there too much. I've looked at OpenSUSE. That's almost a candidate, but getting things installed at this point, a little weird. I think the next one that I would want to go to if I just decided, hey, I don't want anything based on Ubuntu, would probably be Debian. And Linux Mint Debian here, which I really, really like, the LMDE edition. And being able to put simple screen recorder on, and there's a couple of other applications that I use all the time that aren't available in Debian, that would change everything. Then I could use it, see? It's pretty awesome. So I'll keep an eye on this. Thank you for watching the video. And we will talk again soon. And check out freedompenguin.com. I have an article that is being posted there any time now should be up it, either if it's not up already it'll be up in the next day or two also check out easy linux on the web and check out easy linux on facebook and if you would give it a like i would really appreciate that thanks gang and thanks for the great comment montana monster you turned me on to something new i really appreciate it